Welcome to another episode of the 6K Sports Sedan and Wagon Challenge presented by Continental Tire. Today we are taking all of the interior out of the M5 and swapping it into the wagon. While we wait on engine parts for the S62, I thought it would be a good time to start moving over a lot of the M5's interior into the wagon. I'm not exactly sure how much of it will swap over. I think a lot of it does, aside from the rear bench, obviously. Okay, the first seat here. Oh, it's coming out. Man, these things are beasts, but talk about boring seats. If you look at them, this is the, the comfort line this is like your standard e39 seat and it just doesn't really have much bolstering or anything very flat here but that's what uh, the definition of comfort is i suppose and ooh, man we have uh we're gonna have to call in the hazmat team here dp look at that nastiness ooh. i think there's a little bit of mold even yeah, there is, from an old cookie or something oh yuck nasty. yuck 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 so we're no gonna have money to... under here either no money nothing no surprises and that's because i did swap this interior over from uh the original gray color to black so as you can see everything had to come out of this car and uh we're, we're doing that almost again here cool little thing to note is the adjustment on where your seatbelt uh, location is for height is done through this little pull cord that attaches to your seat. And if you move your seat backwards, you can see it raises it up. So this is super cool. I would have never expected uh, such a clever design. I took it a little further and stripped the center console out because I will be replacing it with the leather stuff from the M5. So now it is time to go through and thoroughly clean the interior. Uh, we are using the new Milwaukee two gallon wet vac dry vacuum. This thing's awesome. I absolutely love it compared to our old big dry vacs. They're just such a huge thing to, to lug around and then go in with, with this thing. It's just so small and tidy. You can kind of like get in where you need to do super compact. So I'm going to start off by vacuuming and then I'm going to use the blast cannon in here just to lift everything up. And afterwards I'm going to come in this is a, a tip I saw from Chris Fix is just to use a steam cleaner on really a bunch of these like nasty spots here that you want to disinfect. So I'll use the steam cleaner on that and that should um, ideally clean up this interior to almost like new condition. Wow, what a difference that made. That cleanup certainly helped bring the carpet back to life. I think now the thing that I was about to put the seats back in, but then I realized, you know what? I should probably do the clutch pedal because this is the perfect time to get in here and do that. So I think that's gonna be the next thing. I'm going to have to go to the donor car. While Pete stands on his head under the dash, I have drawn what I hope is a much easier job and that is uh, removing these plastic door handles. And the reason Pete wants to remove them is they've faded a lot more than the paint on the metal. I don't know how well you can see it here, but it's at least one full shade lighter than the rest of the car, and all the door handles are like that. In fact, the rear ones are even worse than this one. Had a quick look on YouTube, this thing you might have heard of, where you can see videos on how to do things, and there's a decent video that showed me. A little plug here, a little pry, a little pop, and this should come out. So I think my life's gonna be a lot less miserable than Pete's for the next half hour or so.
Guys, the pedal just punched me in the face and split my lip open. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. Oh, they can see it. Yeah? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. good. That's good because uh, I was working here and I had this depressed down. You can see it, it was down. And then what happened was it came right back up. Like, oh yeah, like that, like that. And just slapped me right in the face. And because it's a metal pedal, it, uh, yeah, cut me open good. So from here on out, I'm gonna be talking like with my mouth closed like this, like a ventriloquist, a hockey trying to make Canada. sure that this thing uh, heals up as quickly as possible. It's gonna <laughs> not be good. Oh man, I feel bad for you, Pete, but on the other hand, this is what happens when you try to, like, you know, oh, the, swap BMW. Uh, the BMW. Okay, this, this is this is pretty bad. This is the first time I've uh, taken a hit like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, the third pedal is finally in. That was a lot more work than I expected. My GoPro died there, so what you guys didn't see is we had to run the hard line for the clutch underneath the carpet and out the hole in the engine bay, and that was a bit of a pain. But as you can see, it looks really good. These covers, I'm pretty sure, are aftermarket. I don't think the M cars actually come with them, but they look really good, which is why I wanted to swap them over. So this is all in. The door handles were in fact a much easier job than Pete got stuck with. My lips are still intact and it was a bit of a fussy job though because there's this weird access port here on the end of the door where there's a specialty tool that can go in there and release this sliding bracket. There's a, there's a metal bracket in there on the, the door handle bracket that slides in and out and it locks in behind these little teeth. And if you don't have the right tool to go in there, it, it's impossible. So what uh, the internet said to do is just take the door card off, come in through here, and you can uh, release a little lock and then slide that that bracket out of the way of these teeth, which then allows it to pop out of the door. You can see the paint's really thin on there, so I, I don't, maybe they're painted separately or something. In any case, we're gonna get them painted so they look properly, which is why I've gone through all this difficulty. And now we're gonna move on to swapping the rest of the, the interior or I've already started with the door cards and the window trim, and it's a lot of work. So. Uh, We'll stop periodically if we have something exciting happen, like I get a bleedy nose or Pete chops up a finger. And otherwise, you're gonna see a lot of time lapsing of that interior from the M5 going into this here wagon.
That was a lot of work, huh? That was a lot of work. That was too much work. And I think we both cut our hands up a bunch on I took another hit clips. on the finger. Yeah, just you know, interior, I, I think you said it best. When you're taking a te interior apart, it's not very technical, no. but it's just like finicky frustrating. and frustrating. Oh, you're cramped, nothing wants to come apart. I must say, I am impressed by the quality of the leathers. Yeah. Like the leather on these seats is very heavy duty. It's like almost like a saddle leather. Where in the Lexus it's much lighter. Mm -hmm. You can see it's kind of wearing through in the Lexus, where this feels like it'll never wear through. And like in the Japanese cars, these would be plastic, and in the BMW, they're aluminum. Yeah. A lot yeah, of this it's, stuff is aluminum. It's, it's so. really neat. And that's why I've taken so much of it out because, for example, this center console on the M cars is, is wrapped in nice, nice leather, leather yeah. Yeah. where on that car it's just like the, the vinyl plastic. So that's really a, a motivation to try to transfer all of this over. Obviously the, the center trim too is this nice, like, I don't even know, titanium silver, maybe? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what like you'd a, call it. I wouldn't, it's like a brushed stainless look, isn't sure. it? Sure, well, this one actually has been it's brushed, been brushed because like, it's been, yeah, maybe uh, it's supposed to be smooth. Smooth, yeah, yeah, someone's gone to town on it, yes. I think a couple too many times with a rag. Somebody some aggressively dirt. tried to clean this car. It's like they almost, they took the finish off these silk yeah, colors. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> I think without further ado, we're gonna do this one more time and get this now swapped over into the wagon. Another super long job, but we got it together. Yeah, it's looking pretty and really good. And it's here. looking like an M car in here for sure, right? It is, yeah, and a, and a much cleaner, better smelling M car at that. Yes, yes, I'm I'm actually super pumped. This is super cool. Uh, you guys will notice this is not the wheel that came out of that car. This is like the facelifted, updated wheel. I just think it's much nicer than the uh, traditional one, which is this guy here. It's, this one's got like the big airbag. This is just smaller, right? It is, it's, mu yeah. it's much, much nicer. Nicer proportions. Obviously. Yeah. And um, the other small thing that we didn't get to is the rear view mirror. So as you can see, this one has this like liquid issue. I'm going to send this off to get fixed. I think there's a, a service out there for like a hundred bucks. I'll fix this. And I think that'll really make this M interior complete because other than that, everything has been swapped over, right, yeah, DP? Yeah, it really has, and uh, it fit well. Other than fighting with a million plastic connectors yeah, yeah, and you know screws yeah. and all that. And yeah, like uh, yeah, we're we're missing a your shift knobs a little flaccid yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, we, we do need a proper. BMW that's owner that's problems. coming. The mechanical aspect of this is coming. Oh, I put um, an Android uh, head multimedia unit? head unit system into this. Uh, I've got my fingers crossed it's going to work. We've had kind of like mixed reviews. It's one of those cheap ones. There is one thing that I do need to do. And obviously we, we put this interior back together to show you guys what it looks like. But the cluster has to be yanked again because it has to go off to a company called Fixels. I found them on Facebook. Paul there is a super knowledgeable guy. He actually did a touring conversion, oh, wow. an M5 touring conversion. So he's actually been super knowledgeable to me in terms of giving me information on uh, the, the swap stuff, but he fixes the pixels that are dead. So he's gonna do that service for me, fix it all up. So I do need to pull some stuff out here before uh, it goes back in one final time. What we need to do now is we actually have to strip the exterior, fenders, hood, bumpers, anything that's going off to paint because we've gotta get it over to Luca 242 Customs so he can work his magic on it.
This thing's starting to look like a full stripper here. Sure is. Holy Man. smokes. Whew. But as you can see, this is it. Everything right here. Oh, I'm missing the, the rear little spoiler, but all of this has to go off to 242 Customs. So we're gonna go drop this off and then we've got one last thing to do here. This is a job I have been dreading for quite some time and I've been putting it off. And that is the trunk here does not stay open. And that is because the struts are shot. I actually have this whittled large stick here. You whittled it by yourself? I, I cut it, I sanded it, I, I almost <laughs> whittled it. Close enough, right? You're like a monk carrying a staff exactly. around. Exactly. So, and it's done its job, but I hate it. It's like, you never want to have to do this to, to open and, and close, or sorry, leave your, uh, uh, hatch open. So I have the new parts, which I got from FCP Euro, these struts and FCP what? Euro is kind of my go-to now DP because they offer a lifetime replacement on parts. Oh, wow. That's so awesome. for the ownership of the car. So if these fail in two, three years, no questions asked, you uh, send them back and they'll send you new ones, which is super cool. So I'm a huge fan of FCP Euro link in the description to those guys. And now comes the fun part of trying to access these. As you can see, one of these is for the glass uh, and the other one is for the, the, the hatch. And they slide like deep in there and they need to be disconnected. It is a bit of a nightmare. So follow along as I'm gonna probably struggle to do this. Oh, hold on, PT. show me this one with a spring on it. Like how heavy is this, this trunk? Well, it's pretty heavy. It's got to weigh like 200 pounds and need a spring on there. That's insane. Listen, this, you know what? The, I forgot to mention this in the last video. Uh, you know, you were chirping me about building a wagon and you should be happy because I've given myself a weight handicap here. What I have to do is stick a pry bar deep into the abyss here and see if I can get underneath the shock and then pry it out and just pop it off and then if that happens, oh wow, there it is. Look at that, that was pretty simple actually. Ooh, grimy. Look at that thing. Let's, let's see how this thing works. <laughs> well, DP, this is the definition of a blown <laughs> shot. Look at is. that thing. Wow. Order error on my part. This is the strut that I ordered. This is the strut that we need. But I did get the brand, right? Look, uh, Stabilis. This is Stabilis, even though this is an OEM BMW piece. So I've got to jump back onto FCP Euro site, order the right strut. But in the meantime, we're gonna do the other one, which is actually the actual, the, the entire tailgate. That was just for the glass. Okay, strut number two coming out here. Man, what a fussy job. Like, even from this, I'm pulling it out here. I'm worried I'm gonna rip the liner, rip the... Weather stripping the there. Wiring. Yeah. yeah, this one. Oh, I can't push on it. How What's are you it? liking uh, BMW ownership versus the Lexus so far, Pete? This is just such a more technical job, you know? Is it? I think I, I've decided to technical. conquer the mountain where you've decided to like walk up a hill. I like a good you know? stroll on the beach, I'll yeah, admit. Yeah. I'm more of a, you know, climb Everest kind of guy. You are definitely doing that today. <laughs> I think I have. The strut <laughs> on top here. You're like a proctologist right now, Pete. Look at this setup. Oh, did it you hear that? On? Oh my God, that was way easier than I thought it would be. I think it's in. Yeah, 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 sweet. Wow, okay. Wow. Let's let that go here. Go, okay. Oh, that okay, is. Okay, that's it, that we're is, done. That is doing something. That is certainly doing it. Look, it's holding it up now. Yeah. So we, uh, we have to do, see. Do you do the other I, side? That's the debate. I right? read online. Some people said you only need to do one side, but I think what that's going to do is overload the one side and it's going to fail exactly. that shock and, or strut or whatever you want to call it combo. Uh, it's going to fail it much quicker. So I am going to do both, but this is a good sign. This is holding up. Yes, there it is. I can walk under here without worrying about it falling on my head. That's for the stick. What do you do with this? What do you do with this? Do you like, you know? Donate it to Donatello maybe, you know? Yeah, be a Ninja Turtle or something. That's, those but... are pretty good moves, PT. Thanks, man. I used to be a Ninja Turtle back in the day when I was a <laughs> little kid wearing pajamas. Which one did you play? Donatello, of course. Oh, I love Donatello. That's he was the fair. best. He was the best. Well, guys, I think that is going to be officially a wrap on this one. Man, 
What a job today, DP. That was a lot more work than we expected. My hands hurt, for sure. Yeah, and sorry about the disjointedness of this episode. I think it was kind of all over the place. This was one of those things where, you know, taking the interior out of a car and moving it over, I, when I originally planned it, I thought it was going to be kind of like a flowing episode. And then when you get into it, it's just it's all over the place. You're yanking this here, you're pulling this here, you're doing that. But I think the results are well worth it. So we have ourselves, uh, we're, we're halfway up the mountain here. I yes, think, exactly. Yeah. We're at base camp now. PC. That's right. That's right. Everest, we are coming to conquer you with the wagon very soon. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this episode, certainly give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're getting the emails. So you're not going to miss another episode on this because you're not going to want to. But we, there's more everyone. A lot more if you're counting M logos inside this E39 wagon because, man, once we've done this interior conversion, I started looking around and realizing there were M logos everywhere. As a matter of fact, there are 13 of them in here, including one on each door sill, so that gives us four. One on each pedal, that gives us seven. One on each front floor mat, that gives us nine. And we've got 10 on the gauge cluster, 11 on the steering wheel, 12 on the shift knob, and 13 if you go for this, uh, I assume what is an aftermarket e-brake handle, just to emphasize that you are in fact the ultimate poser. Why do we have four? wires running here when I would have just like doubled them up on one side. One loom, and yeah. This would be e much easier to work on. I don't get it. Well, this is uh, a BMW. You seem to have forgotten that they make it as hard as possible for you to do anything. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I still love them.